Namaste. I hope this moment finds you doing well. It's hot today. And yes, this is a flow class and we're going to flow, um, but I'm going to make it a little shorter. I've actually gotten some feedback too from folks who are like, oh, I just, I don't know why, but I can't fit in a whole hour. Isn't that crazy? It is, but it's not. It's also super normal. So I'm going to give you a little shorter class today um, with some nice intense flow built in. And our focus this week, um, that if you do the Monday class, you'll get to hear about uh, in a much uh, lengthier version and with really slow, concentrated focus, but is about observing, self-observation, swadhyaya. And in this case, specifically observing our alignment and whether we're naturally inclined towards uh, going out of what I call our kind of good mechanical alignment if we slump, if we shrug, if our feet turn out, if we're like this or we're like this, right? So my challenge to you, and this is great, this will test your uh, experience, if you will, in yoga, is to come into the flow and then maintain the flow in really focused alignment. And if we're doing it right, you'll ultimately find yourself not in quite right alignment and you'll fix it. You'll say, oh, I'm shrugging. Oh, I'm winging. Oh, my foot's turned out or my knee's turned in, right? So I'll be, you know, mentioning some little stuff as we go. And I encourage you to just continually bring your focus back to, of course, your breath and specifically today, alignment. Enjoy. Thank you for coming to the mat. All right, we're going to start off in forward fold or rag doll, which is with knees bent. And in general, when we're coming in and out of folds, a reminder to do it with knees bent. At some point, if you want to straighten the legs, uh, you always can do that. Right. So we're right away checking that our feet are parallel right beneath the hip bones and they're straight forward in our train tracks. That's kind of my uh, reference for that straight forward position. So I'm just going to fold over, letting my body just drape. <sighs> You might wrap the hands around opposite bicep if that's comfortable. And if this position just isn't comfortable, you can always start off on your back, but we're gonna tune in, turning our gaze up and in towards the center of the forehead. Lightly connecting the tip of the tongue at the roof of the mouth behind the front teeth. And just observe if that feels strange when you're upside down. And you might notice your cheeks heavy with gravity. And see if you can add your ujjayi, throat contraction, creating that nice wind or wave sound. I find that ujjayi also helps invite me to come into my core better. So think about our compression expansion that we often do on our back and see if you can come into that a little bit here. I'm going to add some movement that will help. So on the inhale, hands halfway up the shins, extending. Is there more? On the exhale, compression, belly to spine. And fold. Inhaling, extending, asking, is there more? And only when the exhale begins, start that nice, powerful core compression. A couple more times. And remember, throughout our practice, if you have your eyes open at various times, we're in a drishti gaze. That's soft eye focus, but in a steady point. It's not fluttering around because our attention is inward. Is there more? Is there more? When your next fold and exhale is complete, bend the knees, sweep up. Inhaling, root and rise. Big glute squeeze forward. Exhaling, prayer hands. Go ahead and bend the knees and give a nice Push off to the earth and lift that left knee standing crane. Steadiness of breath and observe if your knee tilts out or is neutral. Bring it neutral. And notice if your weight's tipping to the outside of the standing foot, 
Use that inner thigh to anchor down. And as slowly as you can, with intention, step into your crescent lunge. Make any adjustments as needed. Hip bones shine forward. And I'm going to come into jet airplane arms here as a way of training that healthy shoulder girdle alignment. Shoulder heads down, elbows in. Big breath. One more long inhale, invitation to add a little back bend, which really means we're sending our heart and ribs forward and then up. Exhale and release, downward facing dog. So plant those hands with intention, middle finger forward, and step back. And we're going to pause here and pedal. This is such a sweet place to kind of massage and stretch the posterior chain, the back body. And be again in Swadhyaya, observation. What kind of tension do you have? Where is it? And is it different from side to side? And as you're ready, a nice sighing breath. And press those heels towards the floor. <sighs> nice work. Inhaling, lift the head, step that right foot forward. Pause, is there more? Exhaling, forward fold. Inhaling, drop the butt root, rise. Big glute squeeze. Exhaling, prayer hands. Athletic push. And lift the right knee, standing crane. And observe. Where is the weight in the standing foot? What's happening in your alignment of that right knee and foot? And are you holding any tension in your neck? Are you breathing? Ever so slowly on an exhale, crescent lunge. Seeing behind you in your mind's eye. Jet airplane arms, really activating the triceps. So notice if your arms aren't really straight, maybe you've got a habitual contraction through the bicep that makes it hard to straighten the arms. And that's a great thing to notice. Good. Is this side different? Can you deepen your lunge? What's going on? One more long inhale, a little back bend if you'd like. Is there more? Exhale, belly to spine, downward facing dog. So make sure it's your core that's taking you there. Inhale, exhale, sigh. Ah, heels move towards the floor. Remember, it doesn't matter if they ever get there. And as we hold here for one more breath, please check your shoulder heads that they're rotating open and out, away from the ears, no shrug. All right, we're gonna take our right leg flying straight up and back. Observe how that shifts your weight and try to reestablish it equally into both hands. Bend that right knee and one long inhale, just open up that right hip. This should feel just like a good yawn, a good stretch. Exhale, slowly neutral and bring that right foot forward. Pause. I'm going to take my left hand on the floor, or if you need to, a block. Or you can always come up to the thigh as well with that left hand. Otherwise, inhale, rotate open to the right with a nice twist. Good. Give yourself some space. Another inhale. Exhale, see if you can rotate more deeply. Ring the ray. Beautiful. Shoulder heads anchoring down. One more long inhale. Exhaling, release. Step back to your plank. And you might go right away to knees. I always do for my first round, and sometimes I stay there for every round. Depends on the day. Big inhale. Is there more? Exhale, elbows in for chaturanga. Go slow enough that you can really notice your body habits. All the way to the floor. Anchor the pelvis. Inhaling, cobra. And exhaling, press back downward facing dog. You could also move to child's pose for a nice moment of stillness and ease. Wherever you are, tune in and sighing breath. <sighs> again, notice if you're in dog and if you're not, you can join us in a moment if you want to do the other side. 
but notice where the weight is in the hands again. What's happening in the shoulders? And now I'm gonna add awareness through my core. Boom, draw my belly and ribs in towards the spine. Changes everything. Inhaling, left leg flying. Observe weight distribution. Bend the knee, open up that hip. Check your right foot, your floor foot. Don't let it rotate. And slowly neutral the hips, round into your cat back to get that left foot forward in your low lunge. Right hand is on the floor, or as I said, block, or if you need to bring it up higher onto your leg. Inhaling, rotate open. Exhale, deepen the rotation, wringing the right. Nice ujjayi. One more long inhale. And exhaling, step back to your plank. Now see if you can reduce the swoosh. And what I notice I have to do to do that is to be, boom, in my core, cat back. Good. So adjusting as you need to to get those hands right under the shoulders. Thighs are anchoring to the sky. Big inhale. Exhale, send the butt up a little bit if you're in full plank. And see if that makes it easier to get your chest to precede the hips. Either settling onto the floor for cobra, or remember you can come onto the tops of the feet from there. Exhaling, child's pose. Go ahead and take those knees wide, settle the butt back by the heels. And you might bring your thumbs together and index fingers together to make a nice triangle. This is a, a wonderful way to kind of complete your body circuit and feel really whole and centered. Observe your breath. Can you find the gap, the pause? It's the most important treasure hunt of all. On your exhale, tucking the tailbone to come on up. We're going to bring those knees in. And we're going to make our way again into downward facing dog. So if you want to do a little cow cat with me, I really love using cow cat as an entry point to downward dog. And particularly on that cat back, check that you're really spreading the shoulder blades away from one another. That's going to give you a wonderful stretch in that kind of upper spine. When you're ready, make sure it's the core that takes you there. Up and back. Okay, we're going to be coming into a warrior flow. Remember, if you'd rather be on your hands less, then come to standing crane at the front of the mat like we did a moment ago. Otherwise, inhaling right leg flying, pause. Check your stability, your weight distribution, shoulder heads, and so on. If you'd like to add that opening of the hip, big inhale. Exhale, right foot forward. Pause. You might plant that left foot in warrior one or keep it in crescent lunge, up to you. Hips shine forward, inhaling, root and rise. Good. Now check and come deeply, easefully into your core. Find these in the shoulders and observe for three breaths. Watching the breath, finding the pause. Is there more? One more long inhalation. And as you transition to Virabhadrasana 2, great awareness that the thighs are now externally rotating. And that's what's going to get you, hopefully, good alignment in that front foot and thigh. You can always visually check. Perhaps you'd like to add platter hands. I'm going to ask you to observe your body for three breaths here. And notice, please, if you're, for example, feeling a tension in your torso at all, it might be that you're leaning forward like you're trying to reach something. Try to find a sense of settling, right? Like you're a puppet suspended from a string. One more breath. Long inhale. Straighten that front leg and reach up, exalted warrior. 
Now pause here a moment and notice what's happening in your neck. So I often end up rotating my head to look down. And I'd also like you to take your attention to your front leg because we're going to be coming into triangle from here. And this is a pose where people often have their thigh rotated in or something. So if you're not sure, take your hands, externally rotate, and you should be able to see a nice straight alignment. And so when you are ready, please bring that hand down, cock that hip, and begin sliding the right hand down inside of the leg. And as you do this, we check again our spinal alignment. Is the head straight? And where are you feeling stretches today? So we have the option of adding that other arm up or just keeping it on the waistline. And then I also like looking down in this case. So I'm going to pause here to really see if I can let breath adjust my triangle pose. On the inhale, letting it take room. On the exhale, seeing if it'll let me find more depth. Keep checking alignment. And when you're ready to come up, it's like a pulley bringing that top arm up. And we're going to rotate the front foot so we're now in straddle. Inhale, root and rise. Exhaling, fold. I'm going to bend the knees again as I go into my fold. And then, oh, I'm going to play with straightening my legs. That feels so good. For me, it feels good to kind of pump them so that I'm really kind of massaging and stretching all those tight muscles, hamstring and IT band. And let's take it sideways. So you're doing a nice little side lunge, noticing what's feeling good. How deep do you need to go? Please observe if you're losing any contact with any part of the foot. We don't want the foot peeling away from the mat. Nice deep anchoring. Nice core support. And as you're ready, hold to one side. Deep breath. And the other side. Hold deep breath. Go one more time each side, and we're going to add a little twist. So whenever you're ready, rotating open. Other side, rotate open. Deep breath. Inhaling a nice cow cat back. So my knees are bent, drawing the heart forward. Exhaling, deep rounding of the spine. And now I'm going to take my hands to the other end of the mat. Uh, you don't have to do that, but what's important here is that we end up doing both sides. So just whichever way you want to go and step back to your downward facing dog. I guess if your mat is facing the camera, if you want, you want to be that way, right? <laughs> facing your laptop or whatever you're watching. All right, a little dog series thrown in here, or this would be a good moment to pause or rest. Inhaling plank, exhaling chaturanga. How slow can you go? Inhaling either cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, exhale, sigh. Heels working towards the floor. Good. Now we're going to pause and slowly take that left leg flying, checking our weight distribution, shoulder heads, and so on. Bend that top knee if you'd like. Big inhale, one more. Both arms working to stay straight. Exhaling, bring that left foot forward. Pause, notice if you need to move the foot forward more. Notice if you want to come down into a warrior one foot or stay in crescent lunge. And as you're ready, core support, root and rise. So I'm observing, for example, that on this side, that inner foot is wanting to peel away and that tells me I need to talk to this thigh more and get it to fire up and push down. Two more breaths. 
And while you're breathing, of course, you're observing the breath, but also any alignment, any tensions that just don't feel like they're necessary or right. And making a slow transition to Virabhadrasana 2. So again, thinking about thighs externally rotating, shoulder heads anchoring down, finding that neutral position for the body, the upper body. And if you'd like to, add platter hands. Watching breath, observing. We can also notice when our mind runs off in that monkey mind or puppy mind. And that's a great way to get to know ourselves and our mental habits. And you go a little deeper. Next inhale, rooting and reaching up, exalted warrior. Pause and think about that front leg. We want to really engage those thigh muscles towards the bone so we're not just hanging on the joint. And of course, we want the thighs externally rotating. You can even check your knee and make sure it's not rotating in. When you are ready, bring that hand down to the hips and cock that left hip now check the head. Um, most of us, if our head, if we check with it, it will be in front of the spine. So it's really a good thing to check in in this pose in particular. And I'm going to begin reaching, rooting from my back foot, reaching through the top of my head for that wall. And now letting breath create space. Again, you might add the top arm. I'm not because I can just feel I'm super tight from a bunch of burdock uh, <laughs> murdering that I did. And I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to stretch that that much. Make sure you're taking a big, long inhale and giving it room. That's what will allow space on the exhale. One more. Good. Using that top hand like there's a pulley bringing you up. And release. Turn your feet once more to straddle, except we're going to come into goddess pose. So now we're going to bring those feet in a little bit, toes turned out, and finding where you can resolve in a squat. And of course, if you need to change it at any point, you will. But otherwise, we want to we want to be brave. We want to be curious. We want to know, of course, that we're safe and we can come out whenever we want. But I want to be willing to go into a little intensity on those thigh muscles. So check in, find your spot, add arms, ideally nice straight elbows or elbows straight out from the shoulder, 90 degree elbow bend, and then really active fingers. And I'm going to have you, have you also add the active toes. So boom, flaring them up away from the mat. So I'm going to be here for a few breaths. Just focusing on breath and some of the activity in the muscles of the body. And then we'll add a little lion stretch in a moment. But for right now, tip of the tongue, roof of the mouth, soft gaze. You could even close the eyes if it doesn't make your balance too hard. Notice thoughts, return to breath attention. Good. And now invitation to release the toes to the floor and then see if you can bring the heels up off of the floor. And if you can't, leave them down. We're going to come into lion stretch. I'm going to inhale, sweep my arms up. Exhale, claws and tongue out. <sighs> oh, I can't close my eyes when I do that or I'll fall over. Again, inhaling up. One more. Really feel the activity in that upper back as you make your claws and draw down. <sighs> nice. Inhale, root and rise. Turn your toes straight forward. Exhaling, fold and relax. <sighs> Invitation for yoga mudra. So you might want a belt or strap. 
definitely the knees bent if you're doing it in the folding version you can also just stand up intertwining the fingers behind the back so palms are facing shoulder heads activate down before you even do anything with the arms then we try to straighten the arms hello tight triceps biceps from gardening i know a lot of you are doing a lot of outdoor work too i bet you're feeling it and see if you can pulse the arms a little bit and slowly release Whew. notice the heat that that builds and when you are ready i'm going to have you rotate your foot towards the front of the mat plant the hands and we're going to step back plank pause big inhale check that your thigh bones are powerfully pressing to the sky exhale slow low chaturanga we're going to go all the way to the floor good cobra and we're just going to pump there a few times so inhale and exhaling releasing back to the mat checking in with elbows and shoulder heads no wings no shrugs one more and then simply release and turn your head to the side so even though our our flows are very slow compared to how a lot of people practice them you'll notice that they build a lot of heat because you are using all of your muscularity you're taking the time to engage everything get it involved and that builds a lot more heat than just sort of flopping fast through things so celebrate what you've created your heart rate maybe even a soft smile to yourself why not <sighs> nice. we're going to come into some jet airplane let's get a little further back and we have the option of sweeping the arms forward as well i'm going to start with my fingertips tended shoulder heads anchoring pelvis anchoring and when you're ready inhale extend the spine maybe the chest comes off the floor maybe not again again i really like pulsing in and out before considering holding and now offering you if you'd like to bring one arm forward and if you'd like to switch and perhaps you'd like to extend fully into our superman pose and here again we want to notice <clears throat> any habits of shrugging and if need be just bring your hands wider so you can anchor those shoulder heads and can you get those arms straight we're not hanging out here trying to keep gravity from taking us we're reaching for opposite walls we are in flight one more big inhale exhale release and press back child's pose take those knees wide but as far to the heels as you can go notice breath notice heart rate So then I'm going to bring us into pigeon pose for a great hip stretch. If you prefer pigeon alternate, then you just pop to your back body right now. And so I'm going to come in at a really nice uh, low intensity. I feel like we've been on our hands plenty already, so I'm not going to do a dog to enter, but you could. Otherwise, I'm just going to bring that right knee forward behind the right wrist and slowly come on down. Remember, if you're on your back, you're crossing the right ankle onto the left thigh and then you're rotating a little bit to the left to get that deep stretch into the right glute area and so you can have your hands stacked for the forehead um, fist stacked you could also potentially have your forehead on the floor if that's the case try once again making that triangle connection with index fingers and thumbs observe are you getting a good stretch are you feeling any pain in joints? If so, you always make that the priority to adjust to where there's no joint discomfort. But if you're not getting a good enough stretch, think about using your back foot to actually pull the body a little further back. That will deepen the angle. And we're going to do a little bellows breath here. 
Rapid in and out through the nose. And then a big inhale. Exhale, sigh. Let's bring those hands on back. Inhaling, waking pigeon. If you're on your back, you'll just come out of that side and we'll be... You can windshield wiper your knees or anything you'd like, and we'll be joining you for the other side. When you are ready, folks, release out. Sometimes I like taking that leg flying and just kicking it, whether it's in table or dog. And then we'll bring the left knee behind the left wrist or left ankle across to right thigh. And again, you know, if you're able to have those hip bones straight forward facing the floor, great. If not, as you many of you know, you can do a lot of different angles here. The goal is, you know, if you need to roll out to the side or whatever, no joint pain and a good stretch kind of into the, the piriformis. And sometimes we get it out into the IT band and inner thigh even. That's all normal and good. But observe what this pose offers you. Pigeon pose for me has been a really key pose for releasing kind of old patterns of tension in through the hips and so on. So it's good to notice which poses your body really craves and needs because then you could do those every morning for even just a, a couple of minutes. See if this is deep enough or if you want to use the back foot to draw back again. And if you can join me in bellows breath. Wrap it in and out through the nose. If you're too stuffy, you could always do it a little bit through the mouth, just kind of a panting. And then a big inhale. <sighs> Stillness, settling, noticing, giving into gravity as if you never intended to move. And then when your next inhale says it's time, come on up to your waking pigeon. Again, shoulder heads anchoring, so there's no shrugging. And we're drawing the heart forward here. We don't want to crank on the back. And when you're ready to release again, you might go to dog or to table to shake out that left leg. If you're on your back, again, you can windshield wiper or do a little happy baby or whatever would feel good. We're going to come down to our belly for pre-bow bow. Stretch out that front body now. If you'd prefer to do a standing quad stretch, go for it. So before you even reach back for those ankles, make sure the glutes are contracted. That's going to protect your back. And this is a really powerful place to notice the alignment of the knees with the hips. Are the knees wider than the hips and kind of winging out? Is so draw them in like you're imagining a block between them. And this will get you the stretch that we want in the right alignment. So engage the glutes down, feel that stretch through the front body. And when you're ready, if you'd like, come into bow pose. And that will deepen the stretch up into the low abdomen and into the chest as well. When you're ready, inhaling, press the ankles into the hands. Again, I always kind of soften out and pump back in. See if you feel ready to hold for a couple of breaths. And release. One last time. Press back to your child's pose. <sighs> Notice what you've created. And when you are ready, come on out. I'm going to invite us in a last bit of pranayama breath work to close the practice. And I'm going to be doing this seated, and that is generally how Shatali breath is recommended. We did this one a few weeks ago. It's a cooling breath, so I thought it would be appropriate for these uh, hot days that we're having right now. Um, but once you've done a few rounds, etc., at any point, 
If you want, you can just head on down into your uh, Shavasana, whatever that looks like today, whether it's corpse pose or with your feet up the wall or what have you. Feet up the wall is actually really nice during heat because a lot of us tend to get kind of more fluids and swelling and stuff in our lower body. Um, so it's a, a wonderful way to redistribute all of that and um, it can be a great kind of meditative experience as well. So um, for our Shatali breath, the main action is that we're curling the tongue, making a little straw, and we're going to inhale through that, and then we're going to exhale through a lightly open mouth, like so. And as we do that, we're going to combine the head movement. So inhaling through the tongue straw, you'll move the head up. And exhaling through the lips softly, you'll bring the chin down. And if you can close your eyes for deep focus, all the better. Inhaling up. Is there more? Exhaling down. Make the breath as soft and light as you can. Slowly, again. Notice if your mind is wandering, bring it back to all there is here. You can notice the sensation on the tongue as the breath is moving across it. Um, you can notice how lovely and kind of relaxing the sort of pumping of your skull is. So lots to be aware of here. Let's do about three more. Observe the effects that that pranayam breath work has had on you. And observe if you need, make any adjustments. Um, if you're seated and you feel really relaxed, you might choose to stay here for a seated meditation. Otherwise, coming into your Shavasana or resting pose. I'm going to invite you to tune your gaze inward once more, right behind that third eye. And for this moment, simply let breath settle into a slow, passive breath, just like a baby sleeping. So there's no effort, no intention, simply being the observer of breath rather than directing. Inviting you to scan your body, taking your attention from head to feet. And what can you know? What's knowable? What information does the body have? What patterns can you observe?
Was there anything holding on that didn't need to? Again, these moments of observation of our body and our mind and their habits are really powerful because we know that we're doing stuff like this all the time in life off the mat. Um, we're just moving too fast and have too much distracting us outside of our own skin, if you will, to notice what's happening inside. So if you would like to continue with meditation or resting, please do. Because we know that that's when the body does a lot of its healing and reorganizing. So it is precious, precious time. I'm going to close our practice with three ohms and the ball. And if you would like to join me, of course, you are welcome. If you're doing that, please enjoy the observation of vibration that happens in your body when you make the OM sound. If you'd like to join me, please gather a long inhale. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om, peace, peace, peace. I hope that you stay safe and well and continue to give loving attention to your body. I hope you feel great. Thanks so much for being here. Namaste.